Good morning. This is Bill from Curious Cars on a, ah, you know, it's it's not quite chilly. It's not quite room temperature. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, it's a Tuesday afternoon. I lied about it being morning, but old habits die hard. And uh, today I've got kind of an interesting car. Uh, apologies for not being around last week. Uh, had a bit of a family issue, and uh, in fact, it leads me into something. Uh, my dad passed away at the uh, very youthful age of 97. Now, you know, obviously it's a bit of a shock to lose a parent. It's not something you want to do. But when a guy is 97 and, you know, has been ailing for quite a few years, it's not really a shock. So uh, in terms of, you know, it happening, uh, obviously once it happens, you start to think about it. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to dedicate this video to him. I'm not one of those guys who, you know, sometimes you see like those... I, let me just put it to you this way. If I die, even suddenly, uh, instead of, you know, at a normal end of a long life, say another 10 or 15 years from now, uh, I don't want to be memorialized on the back window of a 14-year-old Kia Elantra, or is it a Hyundai Elantra? It really doesn't matter. They're interchangeable. Uh, you know, I see those things driving around. They're missing a hubcap. Somebody's weaving in and out of traffic, as they tend to do in Korean cars. And the whole back window blocking the view is a dedication to some poor soul who passed away uh, probably before their time. Please, God, I, I don't want anyone in my family doing that for me and I offer my dad the same respect and not dedicate this particular video to him although I think he would have quite liked this car being a bit of a regal German type he wasn't actually German he just acted German he was Polish uh, but um but anyway, he was a great gentleman, a uh, tremendous guy. He, you know, fought in World War II. He was really an old bastard. He had me quite late with uh, with mom, of course. She passed away a few years ago. Uh, fought his way across Europe, you know, made it to England, was in the British Army as a, you know, Polish division. Ended up coming to the United States in Chicago, married my mother, and, you know, unfortunately had some terrible children, myself included. So uh, a fine old guy. I'm going to going to miss him. Good fella. <clears throat> I wish him well on his journey and uh, loved him very much. So uh, that's all, as Forrest Gump would say, that I'm going to say about that. Uh, but I am back. It's nice to be here. I don't mean to bring down the mood at all. Believe me, it's not that kind of thing. Uh, and I have this 2008 Maybach 57S. Uh, now, to say this car is special is a bit of an understatement. Uh, in 2008, the total Maybach production was, what, 119 cars, if I remember correctly, and that was all of their different models. So, uh, in that year, they made 119 of these things. And it's not particularly surprising, because this car, for example, uh, stickered out at about $380,000. <sighs> I just may have to support the camera again to, to ponder that number. Uh, $380,000. So, uh, you know, to say that Mercedes had a little bit of a tough sale on that one, <laughs> I mean, I don't think uh, it worked the way that they thought it would. Uh, they it did Maybach as a... Uh, yeah, it was a show car, a concept car at the 1997 Tokyo uh, car show, and then it uh, emerged a few years later. Not coincidentally, BMW and Volkswagen had bought, uh, respectively, uh, Bentley, or sorry, BMW bought Rolls Royce, Volkswagen bought Bentley. And Mercedes, I think, uh, had decided that they also wanted to be part of the Uber luxury brand. Uh, when those two brands were for sale, Mercedes passed. They didn't even try to get them. Uh, they figured they had enough uh, with what they had. They also figured they owned the Maybach name. Uh, the problem with that is while Maybach certainly was famous for building incredibly opulent cars in the oh, I guess about 1919 to 1940, uh, they were virtually unknown in the United States. So they didn't have the same cachet uh, that a uh, Rolls-Royce or Bentley did for uh, people in America. And that was a miscalculation on Mercedes' part. Uh, Maybach itself, a fascinating company, founded in 1909 uh, by a guy named Wilhelm Maybach and his son. Uh, they formed it basically to build Zeppelin engines. Uh, you know, that was their thing. They're gonna build engines for Zeppelins. And 
Obviously, it worked quite well. I don't know if they built the one in the Hindenburg, but they probably did. But uh, by that time, they were building cars. So they did that for a few years. In 1919, they started fooling around with making cars. And for the next 20 years, they created some of the most elegant and high-end vehicles, you know, that uh, are cherished and treasured by people in the collector market, more so in Europe than the United States. But uh, they built pretty incredible cars. Uh, in 1940, of course, the war came along, <clears throat> and uh, that uh, that was that. They started building engines for Panzer tanks. In fact, I think Maybach built most of the engines for uh, the uh, Nazi war machine <laughs> in terms of their tanks, half-tracks, that sort of thing. Uh, after the war, they did some car repair. I don't know if they are putting valve cover gaskets on stuff, whatever the hell they were up to. And uh, they ended up uh, being bought by Mercedes in 1960. Uh, and Mercedes really didn't do much with them at the time. They, you know, did make some higher end stuff that uh, uh, came around, uh, I don't know, like the 116 chassis, that sort of thing. Uh, they beefed up the cars, made them more opulent, you know, made them sort of a higher quality and sold them that way. And uh, the name otherwise really didn't amount to much. And then, in 1997, out came the Maybach as a concept car, and uh, in 2002 in Europe, 2003 in the United States, uh, they released it to the public, and the rest is history. And uh, this car actually was an answer to one of the initial problems with the Maybach line, and that is that Mercedes built them to be basically chauffeured. There was the 57 and the, uh, the 62, and they were made and designed to be uh, you know, pampering the rear passenger. In fact, uh, they, even when they had the automotive press over, uh, they didn't want the press to drive the cars. They wanted them to ride around in the back seat because that was the point of the car. Well, you know, again, even people at this level sometimes like to drive their own car. I mean, you can't all be Barbara Streisand, you know. Some people like to hop in in the morning, get where they're going, even if they can afford, you know, 380 grand for a car. So, uh, pretty, pretty incredible stuff. The 57 and then replied to that uh, and was the driver's version of the Maybach. It's like we talked about with that old Bentley uh, a while back. There was a sports version that, you know, the rich English lord would hop in himself and drive to the mansion in the countryside to fool around with the chambermaids and, you know, Lady Chatterley's lover, that sort of crap. Uh, and this was the same thing. So it sat half an inch lower. The S stood for special. Uh, they beefed up the motor, which was already pretty beefy. But under the hood of this thing, you have six liters, twin turbos, uh, 604 horsepower, 738 foot-pounds of torque, which frankly is enough torque to pull down tree stumps or even houses. It's absolutely incredible. And, uh, you know, stiffened up the suspension, sported up the interior, and uh, made it so, you know, somebody would enjoy driving it. Let's just get into this thing. Start and say, there's the Maybach badge. I mean, you'd see these things driving around. People didn't have a clue what they were. <laughs> you really wouldn't have had a clue. And frankly, it's quite a complicated badge. Uh, I mean, it looks like two M's engaged in a really foul sexual act. Let's see if we can get in. So obviously the trunk lifts itself. At this level, you really frankly don't need to uh, be opening your own trunk. Uh, this was based, this car, believe it or not, was built on the W140 platform, not the current generation S-Class when it came out. Uh, they obviously lengthened it. This car is almost 19 feet, 18.8, I believe, and uh, rides around on a very modified version of the W140 chassis, which we've done many times. But, uh, you know, here's the thing about this car. Every single part of it is hand-polished, you know, quaffed and loved on, smooched on. Uh, you see it's got this beautiful big chrome strip with the Bible, although that's the same. You know, a lot of the instrumentation is right out of the S. Uh, you've got this umbrella thing here. I presume that's what it's for. I don't see the umbrella, but that's probably where it would go. Uh, now would be a fine place to put a, you know, 300 Savage lever action deer rifle or something. That's probably what I'd stick there. Uh, a little bit too long for a Tommy gun. So uh, now this is fascinating. The guy who owns this car is a KB Auto Collection. Uh, a very nice gentleman named Clemens. You can see some of his other stuff here for sale. Uh, there's a Fister. I don't know what we're going to do with that thing, but there it is. Uh, but anyway, very elegant guy. So what does this elegant, uh, regal German man need with a giant box of Irish Spring? 
<coughs> deep scrub action, uh, body wash gel douche. Uh, I find this to be a little bit disturbing, and I'm going to inquire uh, with Clemens what the hell he's up to with that stuff. But anyway, there it is. Maybe he's handing them out as Christmas presents to people he think could smell better. Uh, the trunk, is it enormous? Not really, but it's enough, and uh, surely enough to get where you're going. So I don't like seeing my reflection in that thing. Let's have a look under the hood. One of the other problems with this Maybach was it was uh, very hard to distinguish from the Mercedes for some people. Uh, it just didn't seem quite opulent enough for $380,000. Let's get that up. I mean, even though you had stuff where the fenders carried over, you know, the hood slanted in like that. I mean, you know, they put the time and effort into it, uh, but because of the branding, they just didn't get it to distinguish itself enough from the... Uh, uh, from the uh, from their normal brand, the Mercedes cars, the way that BMW was able to do with Rolls Royce. But anyway, there it is. So six liters, high pressure twin turbos. You see, it's got the signed thing. Who built that one? Uh, I don't think Betty Rodriguez. Does. She works over at AMG. Uh, I think this is. Uh, let's see what we got here. It's hard to read. Julie Smith put this one together. So uh, anyway, hopefully she did a nice job and it works well and uh, does what it needs to do. And again, 738 friggin' foot-pounds. Yeah, I mean, that's just an incredible thing. I mean, it makes this three-ton car uh, actually drive in a very peppy fashion. Uh, you can see even the hood ornament, you know, has a little Maybach inscription on it. The grill is very special. The lights are special. They have little Maybach uh, things on there. Uh, you know, it's just a pretty neat piece. It really is. You see those giant disc brakes with twin calipers, uh, you know, again, to stop three tons of car that's hurtling towards wherever the hell it's going. Uh, so you really need that. Uh, the S, again, rides a little bit lower, a little bit sportier. At the time, the, this has Pirellis on it, but they had some sort of special Michelin that was made for this car. Uh, it really hugged the road properly. And it is quite gorgeous. It is quite elegant. And uh, again, people don't entirely know what it is. I mean, they may just see this big black thing and think, you know, yeah, there it is, another S-Class, but you know better. <laughs> you know better. You know if you bought this thing now that, uh, you know, you've uh, allowed yourself to have three hundred thousand dollars worth of depreciation before you got in it, and that's pretty cool. Uh, I've got the key in my pocket, and actually that's another study in why this didn't work so well. Look at that. That's a Benz key. Put a little bit of chrome on it, sure, but yeah, it's a Bensky. Uh, there you can see the amount of effort and love that was put into this thing in terms of the door panels. Everywhere you look is just hand-rubbed, polished Steinway black stuff or smooth wood or, you know, everything is just beautifully done in the car. And frankly, it friggin' better be, uh, again, for your almost 400 grand that you dropped. But <clears throat> let's hop in so it stops beeping at us. <laughs> Fire it up. Oh, there we go. Don't fear the Reaper. I'll try not to. Okay, so there we got a very traditional looking Mercedes instrument cluster that's been dolled up for the Maybach. Uh, you see, somebody had installed this caliber, this uh, K40 radar detector. I found it in here. You know, what does a guy who could buy this car need with a K40 radar detector? If he's pulled over, he should just buy the friggin' town the cop came from, you know, and have him fired. It just doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, but anyway, you see the beautiful hand-stitched leather on the steering wheel. Everything very elegant. Uh, these buttons, even if they're meant to look like the Mercedes buttons, they're not. They're, you know, the same Steinway black, hand-rubbed, uh, gorgeous, what have you. Uh, the way the wood elegantly meets that. Uh, you've got basically the Mercedes-Benz command unit there, but somehow it's just different. Uh, you know, it's like, what did Homer say in The Simpsons once about those uh, cocktail sauce? It looks like ketchup, it tastes like ketchup, but man, it ain't ketchup. Well, you know, you could almost say the same thing with the instrumentation on this car. Uh, whenever you press things, they elegantly happen. That is now a Mercedes-Benz Bluetooth unit, but I bet back in the day that was uh, a phone that popped up so the uh, chauffeur could dial, or I guess you'd be driving this thing yourself. There's a nice set of books in there. 
I guess we press that to get it back down. Uh, you know, again, part of the reason, I guess, that this thing was so expensive is that they engineered that to be cool and not break, so God bless them. Uh, and then look at the lines. I mean, everything is just this incredible leather everywhere. Uh, Alcantara headliner, big sunroof. Eh, it's just all very cool. Uh, up front, you have uh, heated and cold seats. Uh, you've got all your standard mirror stuff. You've got an incredible spot. Now, if you're the chauffeur, uh, you're going to need to maybe protect the guy in the back. So there is a lovely spot to put a very large handgun or two with a bunch of extra clips. So you'll be ready to go. Very, very nice. Uh, you also have an additional storage spot here <coughs> with a dog leash. So I don't know what kind of a dog you own if you have a Maybach. Uh, but it's probably going to be elegant, I would think. Uh, which leads me to get into what's... Well, I'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, so all very nice stuff. And uh, they are pulse seats, I believe. So they're heated, cooled, and they'll give your chauffeur a massage. And all these buttons, for love of... Sp <laughs> Comfort, sport, or standard, ESP off. You've got your uh, airmatic control for the suspension. Another airmatic control for the suspension. Distronic cruise control. This will set the distance for your Distronic. I have no friggin' idea. Maybe it turns off the parking sensors or something. Uh, this will run back the headrests and, uh, no, that turns off the parking sensors. What does this one do? Honestly, I don't have a friggin' clue and it may not matter. Uh, let's hop in the back. That's where it's much more fascinating. It's gonna be dark in here. <laughs> okay, so here is what technically the Maybach was supposed to be all about. Uh, opulent comfort for rear passengers. Even though this is the one you drive yourself, uh, this is the essential point of the Maybach. Uh, again, the incredible door panel treatments. You can tell it's very elegant. I don't know where they found the 380 grand, but they found it. Obviously, an abundance of these rather lewd emblems. Uh, you also have more gun storage in here. Very nice stuff. And uh, you don't have it. Well, you got one up here as well. I don't know what you put in here. Maybe a pen where you sign uh, business deals or maybe a little baggie of narcotics. Uh, all very nice. <clears throat> Top in. See what we got. And we've got a uh, screen. More Maybach logos. Where are these things on? How do you, how do you turn that off? Well, maybe just leave it on for the moment. Uh, what do we have? We have curtains. Where the hell did I see that earlier? There's a uh, there's a control for those things. Is it here? Yeah. All right. It's got power curtains. So they're up now. Here. That's how we get them back. So if you need privacy, <laughs> you can just run those things forward and uh, here we get them on the other side too. Now we're running them back. Nice, and then the rear curtain slide in. So now you can let in the uh, outside world. Uh, you know, probably you've already pulled over, you've let out the prostitute, and she's on her way. Uh, what do we have here? Pretty standard looking ashtray. Uh, then we've got uh, SOS buttons, we've got map. There's the map light, thank God, now that's off. Lock and unlock, another map light, a dimmer. Uh, your rear seat air conditioning, which works quite well little control thing on there's a really nice place for a bag of drugs right in there I don't even know if the state trooper will find that and then you've got more stuff here that I don't know what it does what the hell is that oh yeah 12 volt outlet down there uh, this thing what we've got a uh, Maybach phone still with the car you've got your Maybach remote control if I close this and open this up look at this so not only do we have these lovely little grippy handles for whatever. We did talk about having the uh, lady of the evening in here, but now you've got a cooler so you can uh, celebrate uh, with a bottle of champagne or a nice cold Pabst Blue Ribbon. So there you go. Built-in cooler in the back. Nice little armrest. Then we've got more compartments. Lovely little place for a handgun there right at the top or whatever it is you want. I guess there's looks like bottle storage. Maybe that's where you put the flutes uh, for the champagne, the little crystal glasses. More Maybach logos. That's your DVD underneath it. Down here, there's your uh, DVD drive or CD, whatever the case may be. And then another fantastic storage compartment. So lots of shit going on back here. Uh, you also have a makeup mirror if you need to powder your nose. Very nice stuff. Love the lens and the light treatment. 
And then here are these fascinating little gauge setups. So this is an actual speedometer, so you can tell if the uh, driver is following your commands or not. Uh, I don't know why the, uh, what the hell was that? Why did the temperature jam like that? That was weird. Anyway, you got your Fahrenheit temperature there and you've got a clock, so all that crap right up there on top. Uh, very, very neat stuff. And of course, a, a beautiful Alcantara headliner. Uh, the rear seat is also power. Now I'm reclining. Lovely headrest, backrest. It's heated, it's cooled. Heated and cooled at the same time in case you can't make up your mind. Oh, God, wouldn't it be nice? Uh, this is a great little DVD screen if you want to put on behind the green door or whatever it is you'll watch. Uh, you'll be able to see it from there. Or with Clemens, as the case may be, Die Hard. He reminds me a lot of uh, Die Hard number two. Uh, not the second movie, the second in command, Klaus. They, it's kind of every time I see him, I want to say, shoot the glass. Of course, the doors suck themselves in. Very nice stuff. All right, let's hop in. <clears throat> Now, of course, the, you know, over here, this is a guy I know, Marco. Uh, he is a friend of Al's who happens to be living over at Al's. Now, this is all very interesting shit, so let me just pull over here and go through this for a minute. Uh, Marco, thank God, saw me doing a video and thought, wow, I'm just going to water all these fucking shrubs while Bill is standing there doing the video because that should make him extremely friggin' uncomfortable. <sighs> Anyway, Clemens, this elegant German guy, uh, has lived here for many, many, many years. Not that long ago, a couple of years ago, Al, a friend of mine that I spec me auto race with, finds this house for sale, uh, that one there, wants a car collection, so it's got this big garage in the back with mother-in-law quarters and stuff, so he moves in. He buy And I feel so bad for Clemens, because again, I mean, even Cle his dog is detailed. I mean, Clemens has a... Even his little dog is, you know, manicured and lovely. And then Al comes in like the Beverly Hillbillies. You see he's got his Miata there. There's a Mustang and Primer. Uh, there's a Ford that they're turning from a long bed into a short bed. Uh, you've got a... Uh, we got his RT uh, Dakota with bad paint now, uh, a trampoline designed to kill and maim children, and of course uh, the RV that I think Marco's living in, so he just empties the shitter every morning, boats and lights. I remember the last guy who moved in, uh, you know, Clemens was upset because they had a volleyball court there and a uh, basketball hoop, so... God only knows uh, what he thinks of Al. The only thing I will say is I did notice he recently put the house up for sale. Massage seat sign. Now let's go for a spin in this thing. Thanks again, Marco. I appreciate that. <laughs> what the hell? I wouldn't mind having someone living around watering my shrubs from time to time. I have to do it all myself. Uh, you can see it's getting dark. That's why I prefer to do these videos in the morning. Oh, God. My seatbelt. It's even hard in a $380,000 car. You think it would be easier? I think everything would be easier. And meander our way to the front. Uh, you know, typical Mercedes. This is obviously meant to be the sporty version. And you can hear that they've allowed you to hear a residue of this V12 engine noise. Is it a V12 or a V8? I always forget. I think it's a V12 with the twin turbos. Uh, anyway, it, it, they just let you hear a residue of it. Now, how does this gate work? But it does nothing? I thought gates were automatic. You just you see it. Oh, there you go. Okay, it is automatic. I figured you just drive up to them and they open. Unless they're trying to keep you in. Tell you what, if a German keeps you in their compound, you better... Better be careful. Let's see where the dimmer is. Yeah, I'll try turning this and lumen. Let's see what we got on the radio. Safe and healthy for your Commercials, obviously. We'll try that again in a minute. Let's go for a spin. Oh my God, the way this drives. Wow. Oh, I'm okay. I will say this. You can instantly feel the difference between this car and an S-Class. I'll tell you that. This thing is just gliding. Holy God. It's like you had a team of Swiss scientists re-engineer the ride on a 72 Cadillac. 
Damn, that's amazing. Okay, so, you know, you've got this feel, you've got all this juice under the hood, you've got 6,000 pounds of rolling momentum, you've got manhole covers for brakes ready to put you through the windshield if you need to panic stop. And uh, it just feels weird that a car this big, 19 feet long, heavy, 6,000 pounds, uh, can be as agile as it is. I mean, all right, let's see, we're stuck here. Absolutely stuck. It's like five o'clock traffic and we're behind. Well, it looks like my old Silverado. But anyway, that's one of the terrific feats of engineering that they did with this car is made it drive so exceptionally well. Now, the problem with this car is that it just couldn't take it to Rolls-Royce and Bentley as done by BMW and Volkswagen. The whole Maybach thing was a giant miscalculation on Mercedes' part. They thought they would sell 2,000 of these things over the course of a few years. They thought it would be successful. They thought they had like 70 dealers. Uh, none of that came to pass. Pass. Holy shit. Wow. Wow. <laughs> well, there was zero to 60 in about five seconds. I'm not sure what the quarter mile time is. I don't know why we've got what we got cops. Wonderful. Well, at least it works. Um, that is pretty wild stuff. I mean, it is a rocket ship. And I was saying that they let you hear the engine, but they really don't. That was almost like completely silent. I could hear very little out of it. Uh, it not even really a residue. That's amazing. Um, yeah, I mean, you definitely get the feeling that you're driving something that's pretty special. I can't say you don't. Uh, I wish we had a curvy road to go on instead of just the straight line and, um, you know, the estates area here. But, uh, but anyway, the feel from the wheel, the feel from the pedal, the feel from everything, I gotta say, it doesn't drive like any other car that I've driven. Uh, this is my first Maybach. This is the first time I've driven a Maybach. And uh, wow, yeah, yeah, that is a completely different experience from hopping in an S-Class. Uh, you can feel it's heavier, uh, but at the same time, you don't, you don't feel it's cumbersome. Uh, the steering feel is different. Um, wow, let me just give it a little kick down again. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty special. Holy cow. Neat stuff. Anyway, I wish I could go out on the highway on this thing, but I'm not going to because, eh, the hell with it. Um, the hell with it. It's like 10 miles away. That's why you don't want to hear me talk all that amount of time. Let's see if I get my little cheat sheet out here. Okay, forgive me. Forgive me that little pause. Uh, so the test drive isn't going to be as much as I hoped in terms of going around to somewhere twisty or curvy. There's just not that much to find. Uh, if you have an interest in this car, I'm working with KB Auto Collection on this one. Uh, you can find him on kbautoelection.com. His name's Clemens. He's an incredibly nice guy. Uh, if you have any interest in this car, give him a call. He was kind enough to provide it for the review. Uh, do a little you turn right here. Uh, you can reach him at 239-250-3003. And that's 239-250-3003 on the web at uh, kbautocollection.com. Uh, you won't be sad you called him. Very nice guy. And, uh, you know, you can ask him what the hell he was thinking, giving me the keys to this thing. Hopefully he gives me the keys to that Fisker and I'll have some fun with that thing. But, um... There it is. Really appreciate you guys having a look. I should have something fun for tomorrow. Uh, not sure what it is yet. Maybe a uh, Lincoln Mark V that I've been eh, putting together. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, otherwise, we'll definitely try to get another one out before Christmas. Uh, thanks for having a look. Thanks for all your comments, all your support. It means more than you could know. I really appreciate it. Keeps me going. Honestly, the only fun I'm having in the car business is this stuff. So uh, we will see you with the next one. Take care.